Hey, good evening, guys. Just gonna wait for some peeps to get in the room. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so um, we'll just wait just a second for a couple more people to pop in. I know we <coughs> are right on time. So um, we'll just wait a couple more minutes for people to, you know, get in here. But I want to thank you so much for coming on and popping in and doing this interview. I know that it can't be you know, um, the easiest thing to do because of the situation and, you know, um, being that speaking out against someone that likes to, um, you know, go against the grain when people try to speak their truth, it sometimes can be intimidating as well as, you know, just become, you know, going on a platform and just talking in front of a lot of people. So thank you so much for doing that. And um, also just, you know, speaking out for those that, um, you know, many that can't speak for themselves. So I just want to thank you for doing that. Yeah, for sure. So do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Um, yeah, so I'm Jackie. Um, I'm, I'm on like social media. This is Jacqueline zero three. So yeah, that's just me. Um, just bear with me. I'm kind of getting over being sick and so my voice is kind of coming and going and I have like you know some coughs still left inside of me but um oh they want to know why you're in the dark <laughs> oh <clears throat> so I've been sick for like the last week I've also been up since 4 30 and I look like a truck has like hit me um yeah I just look like death right now so yeah that's why I'm in the dark <laughs> yeah, she was going to go, she was going to show her face and everything, but she's been sick and everything. So yeah. she just doesn't want to do it, which is totally fine. Um, but you see that she's, you know, obviously a real count. You can, you know, everybody knows her on Twitter. It's, it's, um, it's, you know, it's the same on here. here so. Yeah, it's <laughs> the same as what it is on here right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go ahead and let, um, let everybody know, you know, who you are and, um, you know, I guess the first question is, um, and I'll just go, you know, <laughs> I'm a bot. That's yeah. Hysterical. <laughs> right. Right. You're just a bot, you know? Um, so, you know, <clears throat> I, I titled it, you know, um, you were Aaron Carter's friend. Oh um, yeah. So I wanted to address that before I even forgot. Sure. Um, so I, I think that like, on here, you said, like, former assistant, dot, 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 or whatever. I don't remember the wording you used. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's funny. Gamble plant. So, um, so I was never Aaron's assistant. Like, did I do? Absolutely. But in quotations and we can totally go into that whenever you get to I don't know like like your format or what you're gonna do um I was when I saw that he needed help and that's just who I I you know tend to put my friends first and that was what I was doing in that situation so her thought as I worked for him, I was his assistant or anything like that. It was, you know, friend. So <clears throat> I just, to, it was really hard for me oh, to <laughs> I, try I to know, word it because I, just, I know that. Because you did with think, okay, how do I say what? Um, so that that'll make for him, and then there's people that work 
work for them. And because you, you'll always see a lot of people, I, and I think some people got paid and some people didn't get paid. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Like, yeah, so it's, it's a complete. the different situations so and start with questions because I probably respond yeah. and not a bot so right <laughs> Uh, I'm here to you don't have to so we can totally skip anything yeah so um, okay. I guess I guess I have to tell everyone who I am again because I keep saying I guess there's more people in here I'm someone who was extremely close with Aaron we would call each other by friends 2013 um, we would talk every day text every day multiple times super super close um, so <laughs> when I say I'm not a butt <laughs> yeah um, that plot <laughs> shit fucking drives me nuts um, so that's who I am but Aaron has a lot of friends that certain people don't necessarily know and this is something that I've kind of been discussing Um, no Aaron in the same similar light that he shows a certain portion of himself just like Lena said that he wants to show you and to me like to kind of like expand on that whole idea is is like he has these facades and I don't know if they're necessarily no I'm not still friends with him um, I don't know if all these facades are really him um so, you know, I don't even know if the person that I spent almost seven years being friends with and being super close with and, and, and talking about, like, everything and anything about is really that person. So, I, I mean, I think there's so many sides to him. And he, you know, he shows a different facade to every single person, like every single other person. Right. Gotcha. And so you don't really, you don't really know which persona is really, and that's kind of like where I am right now in my position after everything that's been going on. It's kind of like, it kind of just makes you question like that person that you got to know, does that person, um, well, we're saying like, you know, if he got his life together and this was like before the whole sexual, no, this isn't Don. Don's a fucking idiot. Uh, this isn't Dawn. This my name is Jackie. Yeah, it's in the little thingy on the top. Um, but yeah, um, what was I saying? Um, you know, just saying. You were saying that um, you didn't really. You weren't sure what kind of. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So like one of our like one of the mutual friends had reached out and was like, if he got his shit together and went to rehab and apologized and did all that stuff would you bring him back into your life? And I was like, I don't think I would because I don't know if that person that we knew really existed. We don't know if mm -hmm. like that was real, mm -hmm. you know, that right. is totally true. Power couple 94. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So that's just yeah. kind of like the conclusions that I'm starting to come to, like the things that I think about as I sit back and I watch a lot of the things that have been going down um, these last couple of months and just the shit that goes down on his lives. And yeah, it's, it's, it's like a one fucking 80 guys. I don't know this person, this person that you guys have been witnessing. I don't know who the fuck that is. I don't, I don't recognize that person. Um, so he and that's showed... really consistent with what the people in yeah. his life personally has has said that this is just not him so he shows you who he wants to show but the thing is is like is that part of him that he's showing you 
actually real? Is that the real him deep down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that's something that like, I know I've discussed with some of the other people and no, because, and that was before like the shit and stuff like that. So even now with that, it's definitely no. <laughs> yeah. So when were you first introduced to Aaron Carter? Um, what year was it? And <clears throat> where were you introduced to him at? Okay, so I first met him like in the beginning of 2013. And I met him on a mutual friend's Facebook. And so even though all these years, Aaron has always sat there and said he doesn't have a private Facebook, guys, he did. He no longer does because I outed it like two months ago. Um, and uh, so she was a mutual friend. I knew her obviously through, you know, the BSB community. And she was getting ready to be coming out to my area because he was going to be doing some shows around where I live. And so she was like, Hey, do you want to go to one of the shows? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll go with you. And Oh shit. I couldn't read that. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> and so we always kind of talked back and forth on, um, on Facebook. And then he would always come across a lot of like her status posts. And so like, if I was interacting with her, you know, on one of her statuses, sometimes he would show up or sometimes I would show up after the fact. And we ended up always communicating that way. And so like, I reached out to her and I was like, yeah, so is this really Aaron or is he fucking with you? And she was like, no, no, it's really Aaron. Just don't tell anybody. And I go, well, how do you know? And she's like, well, I do things for him. So I know who he is. And, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And like, I didn't really care because I grew up as a Backstreet Boy fan, not as an Aaron Carter fan. And that was something he always knew going into mine and his friendship that I didn't know a lot of his older music unless it was like one of those things where, I mean, like, I want candy and shit like that. Everyone knows that fucking song. So mm -hmm. I didn't know any of like his older music. Um, I just knew that he was Aaron Carter, Nick Carter's younger brother. So... Right. Right. So <clears throat> I think for like a couple of months, we would always just talk back and forth. <laughs> BB, BSB on top. That's hysterical. We would always talk back and forth, like on her statuses. And um, so when she did finally come out for his show, she ended up staying with me. We went to like, I think two of his shows. And then um, after those shows, him and I ended up being Facebook friends. Um, and then after that, I want to say that was like around April. So we had been talking just kind of like casually here and there, like just on Facebook comments through my friend for like a couple of months. And then we ended up adding each other on Facebook and he was on tour at this time. Cause I know, I think one of your questions that is, is like, where did he live? Um, right. so I knew, I knew he lived in California, but he was always in different places at the time. Cause he was on tour. So during that initial time where we were meeting, he was, he was always traveling on tour. Um, so that's how so I met was, him. Okay. And so he was on tour and so I'm trying to get a picture of like his environment and how he kind of ran his life and how, because we see him now and how he is in his life now. You know, he's always cooped up in his house. He's, you know, obviously, um, you know, his his demeanor, the way his demeanor is, you know, he shows it a specific way. How is it different then as it is now? And can you describe what it is, what it was when you knew him in 2013 and in, in those years of his environment that he was in um, and how he acted then? So, I mean... I know like when he was on tour at, the, at during that time, I think he was using like one of those sprinter buses thingies um, when he would go to shows to shows. And then sometimes obviously he would fly out. Um, but like Jason was with him, you know, obviously when he was on tour and things like that, but his demeanor was completely different. He was a completely different person. 
Okay. And oh, that and that was the question. I, I hope you got that in my um, in the question about Jason. Um, because Jason's been his friend for quite a while, too. Oh, um, yeah. Think... Like, just like on and off. Because the, the thing, I think the thing that a lot of people need to realize is, is Aaron likes to start fights with people and push people away. And then when he needs them for his own personal gain, he will reach out to that person and bring them back. And it doesn't matter how nasty or ugly things went down. Like, that's what's happened with Jason, that has happened with Gwen, that has happened with Dawn. I mean, even when he used to be represented by Lori Knight, him and Lori Knight were always back and forth, back and forth. And she used to represent him and and do all his stuff in the background, you know? And then same thing with, um, I believe her name is Lori Graff. I think that's her last name. I could be wrong. There's so many Lori's. It's hard yeah, to keep track, right. but you know, like, <laughs> like with people that work with him, it's always, yeah, my voice is going out already. Um, it's always like back and forth. Like he, he will push people aside. He'll snap and he'll be like, you know, whatever, go fuck yourself. And then he won't talk to that person. And then when he needs something or he needs that person to do something, he reaches out. And then that person, like they just come crawling back. Like it doesn't bug them because there's mm -hmm. like some sort of hold that he has on them. And like, I'm sure for Gwen and Dawn, I know that that hold is like, they have feelings for him. I can hands down tell you that that is probably what has always kept them coming back, even though he treats them like shit. Right. Yeah. You know? I, I, <clears throat> yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know for a fact, but it does seem like that, that there's oh, some type of yeah. situation so, going on there. I guess, I guess I should say allegedly I could give two shits. I'm going to just go ahead out and <laughs> say that that is what it is because I have heard him tell, come to me because I've had, I've had to deal with him bitch at bitch to me about everybody. Like, everybody he has bitched to me about his brother he has bitched to me about his mom he has bitched to me about other family members people that work for him friends like everybody he he bitches to you about everybody he'll either do it on the phone with you he'll text you he'll send you multiple screenshots of like fucking conversations he sends you everything wow he, so, so I've I've had him complain about these two girls that work with me. They're so fucking stupid. They can never do anything fucking right. I don't even know why I keep them on. Blah 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 blah. You know, like that's, that's been pretty how, consistent too. That's, that we've that's heard how, from other people. Yeah, that's how he talks, and that's that's how he sees certain people, and he keeps them around because he knows that he can manipulate them. He knows that he can get them to do the work that he doesn't want to do and most likely do it for free. Right. I don't know if he pays Dawn. Um, I'm sure he probably has to pay her, but I'm sure. What's if the he truth does... of the screenshot that says, I can't work for you between this time and that time because I'm at work, but I can work for you after this time? From who? Dawn. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. Um, like basically like, saying that she, she's, she's working and she can do it after she gets <clears throat> off work, kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So like, I don't know if he pays her. Um, I never asked him. Like, I don't ask questions like that. I don't, I don't remember him ever telling me if he ever paid her. I always thought of it as one of those things where like, if he needed her to do something, he would just have her do it, and then like, mm -hmm. if she didn't do it in a specific amount of time like her or Gwen like if they didn't get specific th things done by the time he wanted them done then he would like kind of like flip out and get into an argument with them and then like he like kick them to the curb and like change passwords and do this and do that and then it would be like like a couple weeks later he'd have them come back because at the end of the day he doesn't he knows he they will. Like, he, one, he knows he will. And two, he knows they'll do the work that he doesn't want to do. Because it's fucking tedious to him. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it, does he pay them? I don't know. And if he does, I'm sure he owes her money because it's not like he has money like that. 
Right. He's he's not rich. I mean, he he can sit there and show you those wads of fucking bills on fucking live all he wants, but that's because he's gotten recently paid by a show. But let me tell you guys, he will go out and waste that money on stupid shit that he doesn't need just to front and make it seem like he lives a lifestyle that he doesn't live. And that really is my next question. Um, yeah. You know, that is really, you know, you, you said that you helped him with, um, you know, as a friend, you, you did help him with a lot of different things to do with, um, you know, um, his life and things. Can you go into that exactly what you assisted him with um, and, and helped him with? What are the things that you did help him with? I mean, probably first, was definitely do stuff for him on social media. We used to joke all the time that I could hop onto his Twitter and respond to his fans and I could sound just like him because that's how well I knew him or the person who I thought I knew. And the fans wouldn't know any difference that they were speaking to me and not to him. So I would go on his verified Twitter and follow fans for him. I would, uh, you know, like fans tweets, reply to fans. Um, I would do promo for him for tours. I would post, you know, like the, the promo shots that he would send me <clears throat> and, you know, post about whatever upcoming shows were coming out. Um, you know, I did it for like European tour. I did it for Canadian tour. Um, I would have spreadsheets where I would have lists of where the show was going to be at, what the venue was at, what the venue's Twitter was at, what the venue's IG was, um, like if there were any colleges nearby, what the bars were. And I would literally go out and I would follow those venues on his Twitter, on his Instagram. I would then go and look at the people that were following those venues and follow them so that they would see like see him like he would show up in their mentions or whatever it is you know i figured if i would follow those people it would it would kind of give him more exposure people would hear more about his shows you know um yeah. because a lot of the people that he was having help him with follows in the past they would always just follow bsb fans right you know and if there's any BSB fans, you know, listening or watching now, they'd be like, yeah, I've, I've definitely gotten that random follow from Aaron. That's because the people that would help him do social media follows would literally go to the Backstreet Boys oh. Twitter. And then they would go to whoever was following the Backstreet Boys and they would literally just hit follow, 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 follow. Wow. Follow. That's oh my would... gosh. I can't tell you how many people have told me that they randomly got followed by Aaron. Right. So, you know, he used to hate that because Aaron always had a love hate relationship when it came to BSB because he gets compared as Nick's younger brother. But when he needs it, he'll be like, yeah, go ahead and follow them. So mm -hmm. the people that used to help him, they took the easy way out. And so, yes, I was at mixtape. Um <clears throat> So when I would do follows, I would do like legitimate deep dive follows for him. Like I would like, you know, when uh, even like that year when he did a lot of shows at like different sororities or different college towns, I would literally look up the local universities, then look up to see what the girls sororities were. And I would go follow those different chapters and then follow the followers for wow. him. There, I was doing so much following for him that I would have to stop because you can only follow a certain amount of people a day and then they block you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because when you do too much following, no, don't label me his former assistant, please. Cause I really wasn't, this was a friend helping a helping. friend. Yeah. Like I, I really want to make that clear because I wasn't an assistant. I was a friend helping a friend like right. promise. Trust me. Um, 
so, you know, I would do it with the sororities. I would do it with the venues he was going to. I would do it, you know, with the local bars that would be in that area, depending on like what the show was and where it was at. That was how I was doing my follows. And I would do it on Instagram. I would do it on Twitter. I would have spreadsheets for it. I had, I, I would do like deep dive follows for him. I wasn't just following a whole bunch of mass BSB fans. Wow. So, so on that same topic, um, mm -hmm. you know, doing going into his social media and things like that, and kind of you were saying that he would say things like um, that they wouldn't know that it was him um, because you guys talk the same. Did he have any things, you know, because like right now, there's a lot of things swirling around that he's doing things inappropriately like with the scams and things like that not giving out merchandise to his fans um, mm -hmm. that have paid for it and he's not sending them out and they're not getting it and now there's um, you know open investigations with you know police departments and things like that um, in the past did you see anything like that with his fans did he any do did he do any kind of you know um, just weird like scammy kind of things um, just really weird T type of behavior no never never to my knowledge never wow okay. never. yeah never wow that's so interesting yeah it, it's crazy that's that's like when this whole hoodie thing went down i was like really like that's so fucked up i never had in that entire time that i was friends with him never had i heard anything like that go down never had i heard anything that he would mention go down. I think the only fundraiser he had done that I was aware of during the time that him and I were friends was that the wheels one. And I never knew that those people never got paid. Oh, you mean the GoFundMe for the little boy? <laughs> yeah. I remember thinking like, Oh my God, this is such a, oh, like, this is so sweet. Like, like, you know, he's trying to help this kid and this family. And like, I have no clue what happened with that money. Like, I never knew until I think, like, you know, when people started bringing up all these past, you know, um, what is it called? <laughs> GoFundMe pages. Yeah. I, Apparently, I, there's, like, four or something. And there's, like, 10,000. Uh, well, don't quote me, but there was, I mean, thousands of dollars in there. Yeah, it's, like, it's a little over 10 grand. Like, I remember yeah. him talking about it, and I remember him being, like, so proud about it and being like, yeah, you know, we, we were able to raise, like, a little over 10 grand on this. And I was like, man, that's so freaking awesome, you know? I tried so to follow up with that to try to see if I can get a hold <clears throat> of, you know, that child's parents, and I, I, it was kind of a dead end. And so I, I couldn't report on it because I couldn't, I couldn't get the validity of, the situation, yeah. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't really know if I really don't know what happened with it. Unfortunately, I don't know. A lot of people are saying that he didn't give the money. Um, and that, you know, but I don't, I don't know, because I can't find I can't find the mom. But somebody yeah. did say that the mom, I guess, well, allegedly that <laughs> one of the mom's friend, <laughs> one of the mom's friends said that she didn't get the money, but I don't know. That's hearsay. So I don't. Yeah. You know? so yeah. I mean, sure. I, I had never heard about, like, I had never heard anything. It was like, he's, he talked about it for like this brief moment. And like, I just thought like it was successful. It got paid. Like, I was like, man, like this was such a great campaign and it raised so much money. And like, it was going to make this huge impact on this little kid and his family. And I guess I was stupid. Like, I didn't, I don't, I don't know why I would have thought that I would have needed to be like, yeah. So like, what Where's else happened? Money? Yeah. Like, no, like, yeah. Like I didn't need to follow up on it. Like he just talked about it in passing, you right. know? And it was, it, it wasn't something where I ever felt the need to like follow up on it. You know, I just thought it was just something really awesome that, you know, he put together and he was able to make happen. And so mm -hmm. I never really followed up on it. And I, I totally forgot about it until someone, you know, until I started seeing people bring it up again on Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
so being that, you know, with the, the whole hoodie thing and, you know, those type <clears throat> of situations, was there any sign, you know, when you knew him that because like right now in the kind of state he's in and how he conducts himself, he he constantly is caught in lies. Um, I mean, he's it, it, it seems, though, that he's like a pathological liar. He he, he lies constantly. Um, yeah. And it you know, I don't know why I don't, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't know why he does that, but did he ever do that in the past? Is that something that he used to do? Is this something like he kind of did before and maybe it got worse or, you know, is this something that happened before? No, like I know, I think like when it came to merch back in the day, he always had merch on tour like he would always bring his merch with him and and he would sell merch on at his shows and he always had merch there he he would always have like a fan who was going to the show help him sell merch and he would always he would always bring it with him but i do know that there was like when i when i when I ended up starting helping him try to get organized financially, like when Lori Knight finally decided to like cut, cut ties with him and everything was just left in like this huge disaster mess. And he was under so much stress. What like, year was as, that? Um, I think it was like right at the end of 2014, starting in the beginning of 2015. Gotcha. Okay. Right. And so he was um, left in... Yeah, it was like he was like right in the middle of a tour, you know, he was getting ready to, I believe, do like some of those um, early 2015 Europe shows. And, you know, he was finishing up some of the shows that were, you know, in the U.S. that fall. And like, I think she, she was just she was done. She was fed up. Like, I, I, I never really asked for like the details. You know, he was just like, yeah, we got into an argument and. You know, she isn't doing the things that I need her to do for me. She, you know, she's slacking. She's dropping the ball. And it's so funny because I can 100% guarantee that the reason why she probably cut ties with him is because she was probably tired of his bullshit. Right. You know, she probably wasn't getting paid. She was probably dealing with so much crazy, stupid shit. And it was probably hard for her to manage. It was just because she's. Right. She's dealing with someone who is getting paid from his shows, but he's not like spending that money in the right way. Like he's not spending it to actually pay the things that he needs to pay. And then so then you have these people coming after him saying, you owe me money, you owe me money, you owe me money. And she has to try to figure out who to pay first. And I think that that became like an issue. Because mm -hmm. when I was like, okay, let's go ahead and um, let's organize it. I'm like, like, tell me who your creditors are. I will put it into a, a spreadsheet. Tell me what the balance is. Tell me what needs to get paid monthly. You know, tell me what needs to happen. And it was a list beyond like what your normal regular monthly list would be, like your bills and stuff. Like Were you around was, when he went on that show? I know he went on that credit show or something like that. Oh, uh, at that time. Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> I was. And they, had, they had asked him to come up with ideas to find alternative ways to make an income, and he would legit go, "Hey, can you search for me and find out other ways to find income as a celebrity?" And I'm like, "What?" He's like, you know, like those endorsement things. And I'm like, huh? What, like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not going to know, like, what these things are, you know? And he's like, you know, just find these companies that, you know, pay celebrities to post stupid shit and then get paid. And I was like, okay, so I would Google these <laughs> things. And I think at that time it was like this whitening toothpaste um, I think it was like called Coco something. I don't know. It was like really big then. And a lot of celebrities at the time were kind of like pushing it and they would get paid to advertise and be like, oh my God, this is so great. I think um, he did for a little bit that three ton nutrition um, where he was kind of advertising that and he would get paid 
you know, to do posts and things like that. So like, he literally asked me to come up with a list of like alternative um, ways to make income because that show requested him to come up with a list of that. And he didn't oh, even wow. do it. Him he didn't do it himself. I did it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And so it sounds remember... like this is like a reoccurring theme in his life. He just constantly just kind of delegates to other people to run his own life. Yeah, like he delegates people to do the tedious work that he doesn't want to do. And then he wonders like, why everything yeah. kind of just goes everywhere. Right. So like if you think that if he did that show to be like legit, like try to like make a difference in his life and do better and things like that, he didn't. He did it for the paycheck. Yeah. You know, he got paid to do that show and then he got more money because they played one of his songs during the show. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was a paycheck for him, especially at that time. He needed the money because he he had things that he needed to pay and he didn't always have the money to pay it. Like he would send me copies of emails that Lori would send him and be like, so which bill would you like me to pay? You know, we can either do this one or we can do this one, but we can't do them both. Wow. Yeah. You know, I remember he had a balance with um, Mayo Chores, which I guess, I don't know, if, I don't know who they were, but I'm assuming they were the ones that like organized the tour that he was doing at that time. And he had, um, he had owed them money. He had owed like a t-shirt company money, which I'm assuming has to do with his, like the merch that he was doing at that time. So mm -hmm. I'm, so I'm assuming that like the issues that people are having with his merch right now is that he doesn't have the money to pay for the, to, to pay for him to order that merch, merch in bulk and then customize it. Mm. Yeah. Because it's once you, once you start owing these, these vendors, you know, large amounts of money, they're not going to send you shit, you know? Right. So I, I know that pre previously in the past, he had owed money for merch and things like that, but I had never heard about merch never like going out. But at that time, he didn't really sell merch online. He sold merch at his shows. Um, so like, if you go to his like original website, his like Aaron Carter, something.com or whatever, um, like it doesn't exist anymore because he stopped paying for like that domain. Hello. Hello? There? Can you hear me? Are you there? Is it me or is it you? I can't figure out. I think it's I think it's mine. I it's being oh, weird, right. but I think it's I think it's working now. I think. Okay. <laughs> What was the last thing you heard? And I'll try to repeat it because I don't know if people heard me or not. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I know you were talking about um, his merch stuff. Yeah. So like in the beginning of when me and him were friends, his merch sold mainly at shows. He was doing a lot more shows then than he is now, but they were still smaller venues. Now he mm -hmm. tries to push merch online because you know he doesn't do as many shows so that's right. why i don't so that's why i don't know if the issue with the merch now is because he probably owes the, those people so much money that they won't release any more merch to him and he mm -hmm. if if they're not releasing him any merch because he owes them money then he can't customize any of it because he still not, owes. he still owes money <laughs> Right. Like he doesn't have a company printing out those damn love shirts, those damn love hoodies that he's trying to customize with bleach and shit. I'm, I'm assuming that's what the issue is with that. I'm assuming Shelly that just said 
Shelly just said that his, his merch was ready to be picked up and he just wouldn't go pick it up because he probably has to pay for it mm. and he doesn't have the money to pay for it. And it's, it's not necessarily that he doesn't have the money to pay for it. He doesn't want to spend the money to pay for it because he rather spend it on weed. Go to the pawn shop. <laughs> yeah, he wants yeah. to spend it, like I said, on stupid shit he doesn't need. On the expensive ass fucking Kobe beef that he doesn't need. He doesn't need the fucking Yeezys. He doesn't need, you know, to have like the latest phone every single time. He doesn't need to have the latest iPad. He doesn't have to have these dirt bikes. You know, he, he doesn't need any of that shit. Right. But he, like I said, he likes to show that he's living this kind of lavish life that he necessarily really isn't living. That's where that money is going to. Any kind of quick cash that he gets from a show, he doesn't put that shit in the bank and go and pay bills. He goes out and he wastes it. He goes shopping. Exactly. He'll go and buy stuff from Dolce Gabbana. He'll go buy some fucking Yeezys. He'll go buy, you know, drugs with it. He'll go waste it on anything and everything instead of the things that he should be using it on. So right. does he have the money to pay for it? Yeah, because at some point he does have a lot of cash, but it's like he's going to sit there and go, do I use this wad of cash to pay the money I owe these mer these vendors? Or do I use it to go, you know, party, buy drugs, you know, go buy expensive Put something on credit and go buy some weed. <laughs> exactly. He's going to yeah. use it on stupid shit. Because yeah. with at least when he's spending it, he can front it on his social media. You know what I mean? Right, right. That's his way of saying, look, look at what I have. <coughs> there's, there's my footprint with how I'm living. This is my receipt of, of where I am in life. But really behind the scenes, it, as, as so it seems, um, that's not really behind the scenes of what's really happening. I mean, he's exactly. already sharing that he has a mortgage extension happening. He can't pay his bills. Um, there's a lot of things that he's, you know, that's being revealed that is just not lining up with what he's saying. Exactly. Um, because everything, everything that comes out of his mouth since probably him and Lena broke up is a lie. Yes, he's totally flexing. Um, I, I can assume that anything that comes out of his mouth from the moment him and Lena broke up is a lie. That that takes me to my next question. Um, Wait, before you get into that question, because like there was two different ways of how I helped him. Um, yeah. And I'll make it quick. So like initially I would help him with like Twitter and things like that. And I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, you didn't get paid. Why would you do that? Like I said, I was a friend just helping a friend who needed a favor. And I would have like an hour commute to work in the morning and an hour commute to work in the afternoon. Uh, to go back home at night. So I had some time on my hand to waste on the train um, to get a lot of that stuff done. Um, but then when, when Lori left and I was like, okay, let's, let's get your financials in order. That is when I, he would give me access and I didn't ask for this. Like he would give me access to like his personal bank account. He would give me access to his business bank account he would be like, okay, go log into this and go log into that and see if, you know, those payments cleared so you can update your spreadsheet, you know? And it probably felt like a responsibility if he's pushing it on you, you know? And you're like, oh my gosh, uh, okay, it, I have to do this. It, it got to the point because when he first asked me to do it, I was like, well, I don't want to go into your, you know, into your bank account. Like that seems like, you know, so personal. And he's like, I trust you with my life. Like you're my best friend. Like, you know, like I, He's like, you're not going to do anything with it, you know? He's like, just go in there and, like, look at the list of things that have cleared and then, you know, update the spreadsheet. And then when you every time you update the spreadsheet, email me the spreadsheet. And so I was like, okay. And I was like, well, if, if you want me to access your bank account, at least be on the phone with me while I'm doing it. Like, that's the only way I'm going to even remotely feel comfortable accessing these accounts. So, you know, like, so that's why I said I, I would have access to those accounts. I would have access to personal credit cards. I would have access to business credit cards because there was times where I was booking flights for him for shows that he would have to go to, or I was booking hotels for him or rental cars for him for, you know, shows that he would go to. 
And so I would need those, those cards to be able to do it for him. Right. You know, like when I had to pay, um, like he was literally in flight to go to a show and they had shut off his, his business phone because he had, he had owed like $956. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so he's like, he's like, I can't call them. I'm, you know, I'm on the plane right now and I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. you know, please, please, please call them for me. You know, say you're my sister. And I'm like, I'm not going to say you're, I'm your sister. He's like, okay, well then say you're my assistant. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I'll see like, you know, like what I can do. And so I called Verizon for him and I said, I was his assistant. And I was like, you know, he's literally on a flight right now. He's getting ready to go to a show. He needs to have this phone on, you know, what's the balance. And so they told me the balance and it was like 900 something dollars. And then I was like, how much of this needs to be paid to get the phone back on? And they were like, you need to at least pay half for the phone to be turned on and then we'll give you an additional 10 days to pay the difference. Otherwise they will shut the phone back off. And I was like, okay. And so I paid it for him with his card, not mine. Oh, I was like, Oh my gosh, girl. No, I'm not stupid. (laughs) I'm not stupid. Yeah, no, no. I, I I used his card to pay it. (laughs) Gotcha. Uh, Yeah. So like, that's why I said, I'm like, I had access to that information because I did it for him. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, so it was just it was just me trying to I was like, okay, well, you're you're super stressed out. You're you're trying to deal with this tour. Lori's not helping you anymore. There's a shit ton on your plate. And at this time, he wasn't he wasn't friends with Jason anymore. So he didn't even have Jason helping him. Mm, you okay. know, so I was like, I was like, okay, let me help you try to get things in order. Let me help you be more organized. Let me help you be more financially responsible. You know, let me, let me help you make that change. So that was me helping him. I'm like, what can I do to help you? Tell me what you need from me. And I will try to help you to my best ability. And we will try to fix as much as we can and try to get you in a better financial situation and have you be more financially responsible. And so like, so that's where it changed into helping him personally on that financial side, not by giving him money. Cause I never gave him money, but in that way to make sure he was paying things on time, making sure things were getting paid, making sure he wasn't wasting money on stupid shit, things like that. Right. Yeah. Well, I really, I want to go into, I kind of want to see what his mind frame was with relationships. You know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, with his family as well as relationships as in, um, you know, being with women as well as, you know, there's all this stuff that came up with um, the sexting pictures with the underage girl um, sending his dick pic to the little girl. Um, there's, you know, there's the whole thing with racism that came up. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's even rumors that he was with Jason. Um, there's a lot of different things happening. And, you know, I, my question is for, um, for the relationship status of, of different things, I guess I, I, we can start with his family. When you were close to him, what was his, what was his relationship with his family at that time when you were close to him? Okay, so he was always in constant communication with Angel. Um, you know, he even spent some time with Angel um, and lived with her and her husband for a little bit. Um, I mean, he was in communication with his mom because I know he went to go, like, stay with her for a little bit, like, in, like, the middle of a tour or something like that. I remember he went down to Florida, and he was staying with her for a little bit. So, like, he was fine with her. Um, you know, he was fine with BJ and he was fine with Angel. And then he would have moments just kind of like back and forth with Nick. It was always back and forth with Nick. And it just, you know, one minute they were cool. One minute they weren't cool. And it, it, it was just, it was just kind of like whiplash when it came to his brother. Always. It was like, oh, I thought you guys were cool. And he's like, no, we're not cool you know um so he had relationships with his family you know he he had spent a couple christmases at nick's house 
Mm. You know, like when he was sitting there, he's like, I never met my nephew. Bullshit, you, you met your nephew. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, you spent Christmas at your brother's house. You stayed at your brother's house. You slept at your brother's house. You sent me videos of you and your nephew together. Like, stop. Wow. You that's met your so nephew. Like, yeah, so when he tweeted about that, I was like, that's a fucking lie. That's so he, weird that he... Yeah. Some of the time I'm like, does he know what he's talking about? Like, is he, does he understand what he's saying or does he believe it? I don't know. Well, yeah, that's so weird. But I think that like sometimes he's so fucked up that like he doesn't remember. Mm. I yeah. think that he doesn't remember that part of his life. You know, Aaron is always so focused on remembering the bad that he doesn't focus on trying to remember some of the good. And it's sad. Yeah. It's so sad. I, know that, I know that, you know, he had obviously broke up with Lena um, in, you know, I think, what was it early 2018? Or was it mid-2018? I can't, I, I don't remember the specific time frame when they broke up, but um, you know, there was accusations that um, he was abusive with her. And um, with this particular situation with um, this girl, Abba, that he was with, she accused him of biting her. And mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, did you ever see him be aggressive with anybody? Did you see him, you know, with men or women just be, um, did he have a temperament? Was he aggressive with anybody? Did he? you know, fight anybody with <clears throat> anything like that? So um, as far as like things that went down with Lena, it's hard. Like I always knew when he started dating Lena, but I don't know if they broke up in 2018. Um, they may have had like one of those like quick breaks and then got back together, but they broke up like when all this shit went down. Oh, okay. Like over yeah. like the summer. That, like, yeah, oh. they recently broke up over the summer this year. Like, when oh. everything, when the, when, when the shit started hitting the fan, that was around the time they broke up for good. Gotcha. That makes sense. He just Yeah, so I don't, them. right. So, because I don't know if, like, they had something that happened where they maybe didn't talk a few days and, like, they kind of broke up, but then they got back together. Because he's, he's notorious for that. Hmm. Yeah, I I, but, I think I'm just getting my time frame mixed up because I think I'm mixing up the other girl too. Madison. Madison. Yeah. Him and Madison broke up in 2017 when he, so like if if people remember remember when he first came out as being bisexual in 2017. Yes. Yeah. 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 And and they broke up around that time. And he said that, like, she really couldn't handle it or whatever and whatnot. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily really the reason why they broke up. But yeah, I think he's weird. I have a reason. He, I think he used it as a reason um, for why they broke up. Because I know that there would be times that she would be scared of him. So I'm sure he has gotten physical with her as far as like the intensity of how physical he was with her. I don't know, but I know, you know, is Madison the trans? I don't think so. Madison's a woman as far as I know. <laughs> yeah. I um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I remember when she reached out to me and she was like, he doesn't even know I'm, you know, he doesn't know I'm texting you. You know, he doesn't know I'm doing this. If he finds out, you know, I'm scared of what's going to happen. And I was like, wait, what's going on? And she was like, things are bad. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, I thought things were good. And she's like, no, he's popping pills like it's fucking candy, like they're Tic Tacs. She said that she was counting the pills that he was taking. He was doing like, um, like video calls with doctors so that he could get Xanax for his anxiety um and that um yeah so like that's how he would get pills for anxiety and then like when he had that 
dental work done, she said that the, the pain meds that they gave him for that dental work, he was popping them like every like couple of hours, like they were just candy and she would count them. And so she was keeping track of it. And I had no clue because I thought he was doing really, really well, you know, and she just kind of like laid it all out on the floor. She was like, no, he's in a bad place. And I want to reach out to you to see if you think an intervention is a good idea, because I know you will tell me the truth. And I was like, yeah, if, if, if things are as bad as you're telling me, if you're sitting here telling me that you're scared of him even finding out about you reaching out to me about letting me know what's really going on, right. then yeah, an intervention needs to be done. And I was like, what do you need? Like, what do you need me to do? And she's like, well, I'm still trying to get everything organized. Um, Cause at that time his manager was Lori Graft and they were supposed to do it. Like she knew about it. And then she pushed it off because she wanted him to work so he could make money because he needed money. And I was like, if you're serious about an intervention and you are able to contact Nick, contact Nick. Mm. I was like, flat out. Nick will always want to help his brother be better. Right. So, and I go, she goes, okay. She's like, do you think he'll help? And I'm like, hands down. Because I've seen email conversations between him, Nick, and Angel where he's like, you know, let me just send you to rehab. You know, you know, we need to, you know, life isn't, you know, all about, you know, drugs and this and this and that. Like, we can't live in the darkness and things like that. He's like, let, let me help you. Xanax yeah. isn't the way. So, you know, even you, you can even tell now, even with what Lauren said, she's like, your family loves you. Your family's here for you. You know, let us know when you're ready. After all the shit that's gone down, they still want to help him. And so when she asked me, who should I ask? I said, go to Nick. If you have access to Nick, go to Nick. Right. And she's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to see if I can try to go to Nick. No, he never made me sign any kind of nothing. I would have never signed shit. That's so stupid to me because I never felt like I needed to do something for him as an employee. So yeah, I never signed anything. Um, I think he's so scared so she right was like, now, though, in his life. He's he's just, like, throwing it out like crazy, though, those NDAs. He's like, everybody, you know, because he's trying to hide what he's doing, oh. you know. <clears throat> no, they exist. I just never signed one, and he never asked me to sign one. So I know when I came out about, like, the physical abuse stuff, he was pissed. He was hurt. He felt hella betrayed. He was pissed. That's when he found out I had removed him from, like, his private Facebook, his private Instagram. Um, I had deleted him off of everything. I had removed any kind of pictures of me and him on any of my social media. Um, like, he knew I meant business. And he knew that I knew hell of information. And so that was around the time where he was sending mutual friends after me on Twitter. And, mm -hmm. like, they would be like, how can you do this? What the fuck are you doing? You're a horrible friend. This is such a betrayal. Like he was sending a new person to go after me every single day. And every single day I wouldn't back down. Because I was like, I don't think you guys realize that I was never that yes friend with him. Like you guys have been with him. And I've always told him, I'm not going to be like one of your fan friends. Because it started off as a wow. fan. And I started off as a friend. Damn. I just couldn't condone it. Damn. I I that ended my friendship with Aaron because <laughs> I I didn't even reach out. I I had I had already really started distancing myself um this year. I would, you know, check in here and there and be like, "Hey, how's it going? How are you doing?" And like it was always very short, but I had already started distancing myself and then when things started like really just shit hitting the fan and like just hearing about him like threatening his family and like like Lauren and pregnant and like the the you know her unborn child and like threatening Angel and like 
like that didn't sit well with me because like I could never imagine ever doing anything like that to any of my family and his family loves him regardless of the shit he puts them through his family loves him so right. that's why when he sat there and he mocked Angel, Angel that day that they had to go to court, I know that that day had to probably be one of the worst days for her that she's probably ever had to experience. Because him and Angel...